LA Thieves Super Team, LAG potentially selling their franchise spot, and a whole bunch of other news we're going to talk about in this video, and then we're going to finish it off with some Roster Mania predictions. Starting off, we'll talk about the thing everyone's been talking about for the last week. Yesterday, Jacob Hale tweeted out from his sources, the LA Thieves deal of Scrappy Hydra and Envoy joining Ghosty for BO6 is nearly finalized. That is the wording he used. He said situation could still change, but the team is looking likely. Honestly, a bit different than what we saw last week from Breaking Point, which was kind of like, this is potential. It'd be really hard for this deal to happen. A lot of things have to, you know, go right for this to work. Coming straight from Jacob Hale, who typically has been pretty right in his uh, his news, his reports in the past. Him saying everything is nearly finalized. Definitely looks like it's moving in the right way. And then it also says they're targeting Sender as their new coach after JCAP's departure. So Sender and Hydra coming over from C9. Scrap and Envoy coming over from Ultra to play with Ghost. But of course, as you can see here, and as you saw when I first started talking in the intro, Neja basically said that this is not true. I just want to get people's hopes up. I can kind of play you the clip these, and we can these, watch these it together if you want to hear what he said. Scrap. These fucking rumors about Hydra and Scrap and all that shit have been going on for the last like two weeks. Good corn acting, bro. Chad, I would do a lot for that fucking roster. You guys know this. We're trying to figure out our team. I'm going to be honest with you, boys. More than likely, it's not going to be that, okay? So, I don't know whoever the fuck is leaking all this shit or who the hell thinks that they know the situation and what's going on. Just don't want anybody. And this is why these fucking leaks suck. Because if I can't pull through and put together whatever the fuck that you guys are thinking, then I'm the bad guy, bro. Yeah, so basically, as he says, it's more than likely not going to be that roster. This rumored roster is what Nate Shot is saying. Now, there's two different you know realms of thought here one he could 100 percent be telling the truth maybe these rumors are coming out from a source like one of these players is leaking it to two reporters and they think it's closer to finalized than maybe it actually is um it could also be the thing that you know he's just he's the ceo he's the face of the organization he's obviously not going to admit to leaks being true they want to be able to announce things on their own without things being fully out there and then there's also the thing where it's like maybe they're still working on it like they really are still working on it and it is nearly finalized but things could change as jacob hale says and until it's finalized nate shot's basically going to say like that's not the team it's likely not going to be that like that's just what he's going to say because it's not done yet he doesn't want people to get their hopes up but whatever the case may be you let me know what you think in the comments do you think the lat super team is going to happen or not in some other news, CDL Scrim Intel said their sources are saying Kleenex and Insight are likely staying on the Toronto Ultra, which for one is good for Ultra fans, I, I think. I definitely, I mean, you can see my comment down here. I'm happy to see the duo of these two staying together. And then on top of that, apparently Beans is the most likely player to replace Scrap and Ultra. I think this makes sense. I think for one, we know Beans is friends with these guys. They're always interacting with each other on Twitter, so it makes sense. And I honestly think Beans... He's obviously not the, the same caliber of player as Scrap is, but I think Beans has high slaying upside. I think he can play the role that Scrap does play. Um, so I definitely think it makes sense on multiple different fronts here. And then they'll just have to find one more sub to uh, play alongside Kleenex. A lot of people are talking about Hixie, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. On top of that, another thing I mentioned in the intro of this video, LAG are apparently still in talks to sell their spot, and an EU-based organization is most likely. Well, since the EU-based organization's most, most likely, I don't know what this means. I know Fnatic was one of the rumored teams a couple weeks ago. Fnatic is an EU-based organization, so maybe they would come into the league. Who really knows what would happen if they do sell their spot they better get going because there's a month till the game comes out you're gonna want to start building out a roster although we do know lag is typically the last team to build out their roster so it makes sense but whoever's buying the spot probably would want to get going so if they want to build a competitive team they can start getting their pick of the litter based on who's currently left Take from the future here a little update i already recorded this video but more news came out before i uploaded it so i figured i'd interject here just to give you these updates gentle mates are apparently in talks to acquire the lag call of duty league spot and they've also thrown their hat in the ring to last minute sabotage the la thieves god squad with offers for scrap and hydra uh jacob hale says he expects this to be resolved in the coming days but this definitely throws a wrench in a lot of roster mania so this is, makes it even more interesting. As you can see from CDL Scrim Intel, apparently they nearly signed Hydra a few years ago, but their deal to join the CDL fell through, which is obviously why they didn't sign him, because he was going into the league. He wanted to join the CDL. So this definitely makes it interesting, because Gentlemates obviously is a French organization founded by Gotaga, one of the OG legends in the COD scene, very big name in content in general. Um, and, you know, with him at the, with them at the helm and then being from France, and obviously we know Hydra's French, it's going to be interesting to see if they can possibly pull Hydra away to form potentially their own God Squad of sorts if they are throwing their name 
in there to try to get scrap and hydra so i'll keep you updated on what's going to happen with all this but just know for the rest of the video i didn't have this knowledge so it's not going to be really shown in the rest but just wanted to update you but i will say i sure as hell hope lag sell this spot because they pretty much i mean to be fair their players and their staff this past year actually surprised a lot of people but the organization itself is just never done anything good for cod and then in some coaching news as you can see here d reels contract with cloud nine slash subliners is expired he can explore other opportunities best of luck out to d reel and then also tupac the snd coach for atlanta phase has been let go apparently due to budget cuts which is interesting, and that leads me to my next point. Optic players have been asked to take a pay cut, according to CDL script and tell sources. I mean, to I would say it's unexpected in the fact that it just kind of dropped on the timeline randomly. Whether it's true or not is a whole different story. I don't think it's unexpected to the fact that there is just kind of like a correction going on in the esports industry where people are realizing we can't spend these absorbent, absorb, absorb, absorbent, abs absurd. I don't know what type of word I'm looking for. You can't spend these absurd amounts of money in esports because generally teams are let, not profiting, let alone making many any revenue at all. I believe like I think LAT or 100 Thieves in general, Nate Shot said, is on track to be profitable this year. And imagine Optic makes a decent amount of money, but if they're asking for pay cuts, you never really know. Faze probably also with sponsorships and stuff and some other teams here and there. But generally speaking, the the the, the whole industry is moving towards these players taking and making less money. Uh, I think for Optic players, this probably shouldn't be a big deal. I don't see this being a thing where it's like all of a sudden, oh my God, Shots, he's a free agent. He's going to walk because he has to take a pay cut. I don't think that's the case. The Optic brand has so much power. The amount of subs and money these guys make on Twitch and YouTube and, you know, all that sorts of stuff they do. I think they're for sure fine. So pay cut or not, I think they'll be all right. Plus, they should hopefully make prize money if they continue to be good going into the next season. And then last bit of news before we head over to the, the Roster Mania predictions tracker. Uh, Miles the Ross is, as he tweeted here, a free agent. He was let go from Activision during their Microsoft layoffs. And he did say alongside some brilliant friends in the CDL team. So I wonder if anyone else in the production side of things or the broadcast side of things was also let go but i would bet i would you know i would expect and as you can see maven says here he's going to be part of that contractor life he's just not a full-time activision employee anymore now of course there's the possibility they don't even bring him back in any capacity like they did with merc and maven as contractors when you're not a full-time employee they don't have to pay your benefits they don't have to pay your 401k or any of those other sorts of things that cost more money to have you as an employee. So just to be a contractor, they pay him to work on an hourly basis is probably what's going to happen with Miles. So imagine we're still going to see him on the broadcast for the next CDL season, but you never know. And hopefully, um, you know, if he doesn't end up, I hope, I really hope he does. But if he doesn't, you know, all the best to him as well as D-Real and Tupac, who obviously were uh, all free agents. All right, now that we got even more rumors and stuff with rosters, let's build out some more teams that I think could happen for bo6 this is what we had as of uh the last video we did i don't even know what it was last week so let me remove some of this stuff and then we'll start with the new one all right as you can see on screen these are the confirmed or rumored rosters that we have right now based on all the sources and things we've been seeing over the last couple weeks we still don't know about miami here in the top corner who's going to be let go from this roster although the rumors was it was going to be vickle and obviously we have the lat super team here which is rumored but is apparently nearly finalized according to some sources and then not happening according to nade shot so take what you want with it who knows what's going to happen but let's build out some other rosters. And I think the, one of the most interesting places to start is with Sib. Because I think there's two things here. One, either Sib could stay on C9, right? He is a restricted free agent. It's very possible that they come back to him and they say, Sib, can you, you know, are you okay with staying with us? I mean, I guess he wouldn't really have a choice if they told him he had to. Like I said, he's under contract. But honestly, I, I don't think he's going to stay. I think the smartest thing for C9 to do would be to beg Sib to stay on this roster. But I really don't think he's going to happen. And just based on the clips I've I've seen, it doesn't sound like he's. It doesn't sound like he really wants to be on this team anymore. From the clips I've seen from his stream and stuff like that, so I would imagine he's going to leave. But where he's going to go, who knows? Honestly, I thought him coming down on this ultra team would be great instead of Beans. But with the Beans rumor, we're going to go based off what we know and the rumors we know. So that only leaves three other teams, which is insane. That we're you know we're at this point where there's only three other teams he could potentially land on. Lag, which. Could potentially be Fnatic or another EU organization. Ravens or Rocker. I would love to have him on this Ravens team here with Gwyn. My big fear or my big question mark about that move would be, are Ravens going to pay him, right? Like, I don't know. Ra Ravens clearly aren't an org that likes to spend that much money. I don't know that they want to pay Sib because he's definitely not a player that's going to be on a minimum contract. I think a team like Minnesota Rocker with G2 is more likely to pay him. 
But the question is, does it does he fit on this roster? Cobra, I believe, is more of a flex AR. Sib is more of a flex AR. I really don't know. For the sake of fun, taking out the monetary aspect of it, I'm going to throw him on this Ravens team because I think him and Gwyn would be a sick duo to see and then to pair two more players alongside them. I think two SMG players to pair alongside Gwyn, that would be really, really good. I think Joe Deceives is one. I think him and Gwyn would work really well together and they do appear to be friends from what I've seen on Twitter and them always playing together on stream. Then I also think Nero would also be another good player that would be good um for this Ravens team now the question is who would it be who's more likely honestly I'm gonna go with Joe Deceives um especially because I, I don't know who would cost more money necessarily I think Nero is probably at least on paper and based on last season a better player than Joe D no disrespect to him um so I think Joe would probably be a little bit cheaper maybe make a little bit more sense especially because he seems to be pretty good friends with Gwyn and then lastly this Ravens team would need a man AR to round it out I mean I think attach would be like a perfect option here just given like what this team needs and like it just you know another really good probably the best main ar available uh and honestly i think that's what i'm gonna run with because i think this team is disgusting although maybe attach goes back to rocker we know attach has always you know been in good good favor with the rocker camp and maybe he does go back over there also to finish off the ultra roster i'm gonna put hixie in here i think that actually makes a lot of sense i think him and kleenex were a good duo we've seen in the past and i also think uh, I think Bant is coming in as some sort of coach or GM for them, probably. You know, I think they're going for their little EU core here. People that are all friends, things like that. Good culture. So I think it makes a lot of sense. Now we have three teams to finish out. Not a lot of spots, which is super disappointing. I, did, I wish there was more teams in the league, but also it looks like we're going to potentially have a, a top three next year instead of a top four like we just saw. So there really is no winning, I feel like, right now when it comes to... Uh, who to put on these rosters, but we're going to build what we can. I'm going to start off by putting Nero on this roster here with Cloud9. I don't know if him and Kiz role-wise work the best. I feel like they play a bit of a similar role, but they'd be a very deadly fast-paced duo, at least if they, you know, play up to the standard we know they can play at. Um, and I do think that Nero is one of the better SMG free agents on the market. So if C9 want to continue to compete, which I feel like they probably do, I think this would make sense. They also could move on from Kiz or Skies. I feel like that's not something we've been talking about very much, but imagine just based off what we heard, we haven't heard any rumors about this. I would assume they're going to stay. And then C9 need a flex player, fast pace, second AR, preferably one that's going to get a lot of kills or get one that's going to do a good job getting kills. I honestly think the, the prime pick here is going to be Geo. Him coming off his rookie year from on the Legion, I thought he did pretty good. I thought he was honestly pretty underrated in the rookie of the year race him and Nero obviously did just play together so assuming they are probably somewhat friends or at least get along unless there was a falling out there that we don't know about but I think this team actually makes sense would be pretty competitive and um would be a team that you know probably could break into the top four if they're peaking well together but also is probably at least get a qualifier for champs. Now let's finish off the Minnesota Rocker team, Linz and Cobra. We haven't heard anything also about the whole Cobra rumor in a very long time. So who honestly knows what's happening with that? But I guess based off what we heard a while ago that he was going to be joining Rocker with Linz, we're going to continue to go with that. I'm going to try something different that I don't think I've done in any of these videos yet. And I'm going to start off with Slasher. I'm going to bring Slasher in as the veteran AR here to uh, play alongside Cobra as the duo for Rocker. I think that could maybe be interesting. Like I say in all these videos, I'm still a slasher believer, and I still believe he has what it takes to be a good player in this league. Um, so I'm going to throw him on that team with Rocker. And then they need another SMG player, one preferably that's going to be more of an Encher man and allow Linz to slay out. You could honestly look at bringing a guy like Vivid back, maybe a guy like Estriel, but both of those guys played with Rocker at some point throughout this season or G2 at the Esports World Cup in the case of Estriel. But I don't know if either of them would really be coming back. But to be honest... I actually, do, I actually think I don't mind bringing Vivid back into this team. I think the best version of Linz we saw was with Vivid. I don't know if they're friends or not behind the scenes, Linz and Vivid. But honestly, I think, you know, bringing maybe Vivid back and letting them run it back together. They obviously got a top four at the beginning of this past season with them as the, as the duo. I think this team low-key probably has a, a, a potential higher peak and higher floor than the last Rocker team we saw. And I do think Vivid should be in the league. So you let me know what you think about that Rocker team, but... It's kind of hard to build like perfect rosters at this point just because there's too many players they put in. Like there's so many players at the bottom down here that should be in the league. We got to round out LAG or potentially Fnatic or someone along the sorts there or with you kind of a mix and match of whatever is left. So I'm going to build out something that I think makes some sense. 
We're going to start out with TJ Halley. I think TJ 100% should get a spot in the league. I think he should be a starter. Um, and it's the only spot available. So we're going to start with him. Then I guess I'm going to bring Estriel back into this team. I think uh, Estriel coming back to LAG, or like I said, maybe they're selling the spot. Who really knows? But I think Estriel definitely deserves another chance in the league. I think he had a good rookie season. Now we move to our ARs and... I mean, there's a bunch of options. I know people have been saying, like, I know, well, Max, I guess he could be a flex, but I'm just for the sake of Mac, a lot of people have been saying, like, put Mac on a team in these videos. I just personally don't think he's going to get right back into the league after not playing for a whole year. I could be wrong. Same thing with Illy. I think Illy definitely can be in the league. I just don't know what's happening with him behind the scenes, although I have been putting him on teams, I think, in some of the recent videos. So we're going to leave both of them off for the sake of this one. For the last two spots are the AR spots on LAG. I I'm not really sure, honestly. I feel like... L LAG did, I guess, have a couple rookies this past season, so maybe they continue to bring in some rookies. We're going to throw Encourage on this team. Um, I think Encourage is one of the most hyped up 18-year-olds right now in the Challenger system, so maybe he somehow gets on this team. And then to round it all off, I don't know if he's a main, honestly, a main or a more of a flex SMG type player, but... For, this, for the sake of this, we're going to have him as one of the ARs. And another AR, a player that's been in and out of the league, but I think could... Uh, is actually someone who's deserving of a spot that's been in challengers recently, is Paul X. I actually think Paul X should get another chance in the league, and that's the little makeshift LAG roster we're going to go with. It's probably going to be 100% wrong, but they're the hardest team to build for because nobody knows what they're going to do, and there's a lot of players to choose from. But let me know what you think about these teams. Which teams do you like? Which teams do you not like? And then, obviously, let me know, do you think the LAT Super Team is going to happen down below in the comments? If you enjoy this type of content, make sure to sub. I appreciate the support, the views, the likes, the comments of every single video I posted recently. It's been super cool just to see kind of the community growing and being able to engage with you guys and hear your guys' thoughts. It's the most fun part about all this is just talking about something I'm passionate about that a lot of you guys are also passionate about, which is competitive CODs. So if you enjoy this type of stuff, definitely make sure to stick around, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next video.